Dara, congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, Stephen, are you jumping in as well? Yeah. Come on over and say hello to us. Chair, you. if you, yourself and Stephen can share that. Well done, congratulations. Well done, well done. Well, uh, Stephen, head coach, we'll start with you first, or if yourself and Dara want to share either or. Uh, how was that dressing room? Yeah, good, good place to be. Um, but as I said, not to put a dampener on, we've not won anything yet, like we're in the final, um, and we have another game now on Monday to play, so... We'll enjoy the next couple of days of knowing we're in the final and then look forward to the game on Monday and then it's business again over the weekend. Obviously warm down and train on Sunday and then game uh, game Monday. But obviously, look, the dressing room bouncing. We're delighted. Um, really believe this week it wasn't a case of oh, we were going in and it'd be great to be in the final. No, we were going in and we're going to the final. That was the mentality, you know. For you, Dara, as a 19-year-old, to get an assist, get a goal... I know you had 20 plus friends and family here. Anthony Delaney had to drag you in from taking selfies with all the young fans who love you. What was that feeling like? Uh, it was so special. Like I knew before going into the game, like they're either going to be crying or eyes, or you're going to be celebrating after the game. And I didn't want to have that heartbreak after the game, so I just knew, just to walk me, to walk me, uh, walk me arse off, walk me arse off, and uh, <laughs> just put in a shift and see what happens from there. But thankfully, we got the win and buzzing them over the mill. Talk your involvement in the second half, assist and goal. It is assist. Oh yeah, just hit a first first time. time and Matty made the run. I just had to put it into the channel. And I knew he's quick. I knew he's quicker than the defender. So it went into his pan. What a rocket into the top corner! Like I just went off celebrating. Then I was wrecked running from Yonga. My legs were like jelly. I was like, just get on the end of it. And having a look here, Dara talked us through it in the past. You just saw it first time and in your pop. Yeah, great run with Matty. What a finish! Into the top corner, Steve. What a pass! What a finish by Matty. Yeah, yeah, great pass. Um, Dar actually played a very similar pass, not first time last Friday to put Chris in up at the Brandywell. So great way to pass, great movement of your matter. You recognise the space in behind, and then the finish. You know, it's an absolute rocket. So you're thinking there if your opposition shoots from there, you know, more than likely not going to score. But he's rifled it in. I don't think any keeper saving that. Yeah, we were uh, saying Dara on the commentary that when you were young, lad, we were trying to encourage you to take less touches and pass it, and that's a great example of uh, of you becoming more mature as a senior player. Yeah, we get a ball again now, we don't pass the ball by the gaffer and gate and all the boys, so I think I used to probably take a little bit too much of it, but I'm just learning now in these big games as well. You have to use your teammates, you know what I mean? And my legs are coming like, like jelly, jelly so I couldn't probably run with the ball, to be honest with you, so I was seeing Matty fly into his pan, thankfully at the back of the net. And Stephen, in terms of <laughs> Maddie Smith as well, actually, Dara, sorry, we're going to see your goal first. Um, Stephen, you want to talk us through it? Yeah, again, great, great way to pass by row, turnover, and uh, Dara's identified again in transition, and he's really been aggressive with his run. And then, you know, a lot of the times players coming in off the side, they can be a little bit rash or rush it a bit, but Dara was calm as you like, and as he was just lining up, Pad said, dink it, and it's a beautiful little dink, yeah. It's lovely to have them soft touches, I wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> you would, you're uh, I think. 55 minutes gone, we were kind of saying, listen, this is kind of poised to go all the way. It was a perfect time to score because. We didn't want the game to go end to end because both sets of players, they, they would have liked that. You would have had Duffy going one way, you would have had Dara going the other way. It was a perfect time to score. It just allowed us to kind of reshape, regroup yeah. a little bit more and control it then. Even though they had the ball, we, we controlled it. Yeah, I think even at 2-1, it was probably a little bit too much. My liking like a basketball game at times, you know. Um, was that more them being able to face that again? Was opportunity to do that? I think so. So I think, look, ultimately when a team fires bodies ahead of the ball, you know what I mean? It's tough enough to deal with. And in transitions, then if you're attacking, it turns over and they have three or four that are staying up the pitch, then it lends itself to that. And obviously then if they do keep boys up the pitch, what, what just happened, the two goals we scored we, in our transition, then there's going to be space as the other side of it. So they're a good team, they have good attacking players, they're going to have chances, they're going to have dangerous moments and we just we, we stayed compact, we condensed the spaces, but we could, probably could have done that better. But in general terms, you know, they're always going to have chances and we were clinical and, and I always felt that we were going to have plenty of chances too to go and win the game. No, there's a lot of football to be played. And listen, I know Rovers are a little bit ahead, but we can still finish the season really strong. We want momentum going into that cup final, Dublin Derby Cup final. We were just saying, well, I can't remember the last one. And we've been told that it was Shells and Bows in 99, I think it was. It's a long, long time ago. But two sets of passionate fans, it's going to be a great occasion. Yeah, going to be brilliant. Brilliant. As you said, Dublin Derby is going to be good rivalry, you know. And as you said, it's probably Dundalk Cork for years. Mm geographically a bit far away and then Dundalk Rovers um, so you know Pat's Bowes is a nice ring to it as you said Dublin Derby and it'll be something to really enjoy but we have we have six big games before that yeah, we'll check you on the first goal as well continue our wrap of the game and get Stephen's thoughts on it King Billy he's been an important player got some important goals and uh, he's robbed it here and 
all of a sudden it's 1-0. Yeah, again, again Alfie, Alfie got a press square throw, so Alfie got a press on it and then turned it over and Billy drove in. Probably not struck it brilliantly, but you know, we're all Billy is two very good feet. He, he can lace it with both feet, so we're looking for him to get it out of his feet quicker and, and get strikes away, and he got it away there, and uh, you know, a great goal. But it came, I suppose, from Alfie recognising that it was on to press. I think Sloggett had his back to the play and turned the ball over, so that's what we're trying to encourage. Dara would be t- pay a testament to that. Be aggressive out of possession in regards to your press when someone has his back to you and facing his own goal really get down on top of him and try and turn the ball over That's just lastly on each of you Dara first just on the supporters you know nearly 5,000 in here tonight it's probably the biggest crowd you've ever played in front of it was absolutely electric and you know the St. Pat's fans the last time Jair was the captain in 2014 travelled to the Viva in their thousands to create an unbelievable atmosphere they've had to support you guys at home for the last couple of years so for them to have the moment on the pitch after celebrate the goals and be looking forward to going to the Viva on the 28th of November is just brilliant yeah, I think the scenes at the end just sums up the club, to be honest. I think uh, the fans have been behind us every step of the way, and we've we've had good home form this season, so it's good for them to be able to come and support, and obviously we're getting a few wins, but it's going to be a serious day out for them, like, and us as the staff, the players, like I think we all deserve it, but it's one more step now to get our hands on the trophy, and as the said, we've won nothing so so far, and we, we go again on Monday in the league, and just try and put that to the back of our head, but I'm looking forward to it, Viva, to be honest with you. Even for you, you know, we've spoken often about the fans and, you know, in your tenure for almost all of your, your first full season or half season last season, four games of fans, 14 but no fans, same this season. What was it like for you to, to have them on with them and to know that they're going to be there and there are thousands to support you in a few weeks? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I suppose since I've come in, you know, it's been a bit stop-start. As you said, the majority of our games have been have been no crowd, so this is the first sort of... I'd say it's the first time in a long time there's been 5,000 maybe at Richmond, even pre-COVID, so it's great. I think there's a good connection between the players and the supporters. I think when we're going through sort of, you know, difficult times five or ten minute spells which you're going to get when you come up again the, the, the fans stay with us and that's massive it's massive for players their morale their confidence and going that extra yard so I think there's a good connection between the players and fans ultimately I keep saying to the to the players all fans want to do is come down every second Friday or every Friday travel away and, and see a team that's given their all you're not going to play very well every week but I think they can't go away any time this season and said look We've had three or four passengers who don't care about the jersey or don't care about St. Pat's. I think we have a real honest group, a good, real good sort of mix, young players, experienced players. So I think there's a good feeling, there's a good vibe amongst the players and the, and the supporters. And players feed off that. You know, you have little Dara. He knows play, people are coming, come, going to come in to watch him and that gives him massive confidence and he has the type of mentality. Not that he's done anything yet, but he has a type of mentality. As I said before the game, he thinks there's 5,000 here to watch him and it's a great mentality to have. <laughs>